Welcome to the Age of Empires forecasted game. We got in the color teal, playing as the Kushi's legacy. It's sort of. And in the color red, playing as the Ayubits. It's fate, steel, and gunpowder. Is it gunpowder? Yeah, it is. And gunpowder. Yeah, it's a mix. This game is a mix of fate, steel, and gunpowder. That's, he summarizes it pretty well. It's. It's, it's a lot of fate because you need to be there on the right place at the right time. It's a lot of steel because you need to be there on the right time with steel. And it's better if you do it with gunpowder. Especially if you are in the Shushi's Legacy. Now, this civilization plays a little bit different from the regular Chinese. They change quite a... I wouldn't say quite a few things, but they change quite a lot of things here. One of these big changes is the, the farms cost much less. If you see the cost of the farm... Hey, wait, it says 75? That's interesting. Oh, you, you need the you, you need the Song, Song, Song Dynasty to, to check that. So, so if we, with the Song Dynasty, you get some economic bonuses also. But not, not the villager production speed, you, you will get some bonuses for building cheaper cheaper buildings. And with that also comes farms. So it should be interesting to see early farm transitions coming from the Chinese. And see, maybe this civilization is focused more on offensive. Maybe it's more aggressive than the traditional Chinese. We will see. We it's we we're we're about to see. They say it's pretty strong. Whereas the Ayubits, it's pretty similar to to his brother, the Dyn Abbasid Dynasty. Just have a different wing options. You can go from economic, military, culture, and trade. You can just choose one of them. You uh, once you choose one, you cannot choose the other one. So. It you just have a different options. It's gonna be the trade wing. So, uh, for this one, every three minutes a trade caravan arrives with a random selection of four fireball exchanges of resources and units. The quality of these trades is permanently permanently set depending on the age at which the trade wing is constructed. Using the trade wing to enter later stage provides more lucrative trades. Oh, that's very interesting. I'm a little bit confused, to be honest. <laughs> that's quite a lot of information. Uh, not much I can guess from this other than trying it and see how it goes. And we see Meditation Gardens. Now, this landmark is the go-to landmark usually for the Chinese, just because it gives you passive income based on your surroundings. surroundings. So here you have wood, you have food. Does he get the gold? Probably he will. He gets the gold. So if he does, he will get three resources passively for the rest of the game. But the thing is, if an enemy stands here, let's say they come to attack you, or even the scout just stands here in this area, the bonus stops. So now we should be seeing more bonuses coming coming soon. I don't know if this is like the the right amount. It should, it should change with time. It should change. Now, Ashup, gonna gonna be happening soon for Fate Steel and Gunpowder. Now, this is a map that is really interesting. It looks easy to wall just because you have uh, some hills in the middle. Eh? You can just wall this area, but it's not. It's not that easy to wall. I tried. It's uh, trust me, it's not that easy to wall, <laughs> to wall this map. That's got it's got gonna be annoying here. Now, sort of aging up with the Jiang Jiangnan Tower. So what it is? Acts as a tax drop for Imperial officials. Receive a free unit at the tower whenever a barracks archery range or stable is completed. That's very nice. Receive a free villager whenever a town center is complete. So basically, free units every time you go, you you produce a building. But talking about free units, you're about to need those later because 
It sort of just lost one villager heal in this attempt. What is this? Bedouin swordsman? What is this? I don't see any production building. I'm a little bit confused. Did they come did they come with the with the trade wing? Uh, this is a very special unit. Bonus plus melee range units. And then you have the Bedouin Skirmisher. Bonus get light infantry, long range. Kind of like a javelin shower, right? And you see, Meditation Gardens has this aura. If an enemy just stands here, he he will lose the bonus. So you will see his resources per minute will drop. Now, sort of. Uh, trying to get to that second town center. Also, guess that Chugenus. Remember, Chugenus Legacy don't have regular archers. They only come with Chugenus. There you go. Cool, 30... 30 foot, 30 wood, and 20 gold. So they're quite expensive, but they're, they're pretty good. Especially in large numbers, not so much when they're, they have low numbers. More chickens joining the party. Five so far. Should be able to defend this. Now, second town center going up. Wonder where where where's it gonna be? Sorry, not not enough wood yet. Is he already built the town center? Not not really. He could try to put it here on the deer. But you know, as the Chinese you want to collect those taxes, so it really doesn't matter much where you put your town center. Except if you want to protect something. Protect some resources for some time. As long as you don't lose it, you're fine. Sort of going with seven, eight Chuganos in total, one more to come. See, Barracks going out for Fate Steel and Gunpowder. Looks like he decided to go for Steel and a little bit of Fate. And we got the Chuganos going for a counter attack. However, these units are quite strong. It's good if you have the range attack. Upgrade just because they fire three times, so that becomes a plus three damage. Which is very nice to have. But they are not very good in low numbers like this, like, like nine. You, you need at least like 20 to, to make some significant damage. Now we see the Gulams joining the party. Sorry, is it? How come is... Oh, sorry. Fate, Steel, and Gunpowder are already in the next age. Uh, looks like it's gonna be the Culture Wing. Maybe chose the one that can you can age up later so he can go for Fast Imperial. Look at this scout. Looks really cool. Waltz going out in the center of the map. Trying to protect himself a little bit. Town center already up. We should see a difference in villager count soon. Not second town center yet for the Ayubits. Now, Chuginus will try to kite the army, but is kiting them in the wrong direction? Usually you want to run away like far from your base. Just because when they arrive, they're already in your base. Right? And so what they do is like, okay, let's... Let's pay you a visit, that's that's what they will do. It's like these guys, right? Running in opposite direction. And I remember the town center only have can have a space for seven villagers. Not gonna be able to to do as much damage as before. He's sort of trying to go for castle himself. And we see the early palace guards unique for the Trish's legacy. Normally you get those in Castle Age, but with the Shuji's Legacy you can get them in Feudal Age. You get the Feud Feudal Age version. Basically the early, the early Man at Arms. And we see that Healer already is the Dervish. She comes with interesting 
Interesting mechanics, whenever carrying a relic can heal 50 times faster. Heals all, all nearby units. Requires a little bit of micro, but if you manage to do it well, uh, it can turn battles into your favor. Now, let's see if those early palace guards are going to do some damage against those golems. Golems with one more attack and much more health, actually. So, they're going to have a hard time. You're going to need more than seven. Ashab not coming very soon for a sort of... This doesn't look quite good, actually. Let's see how, how he... How he will defend. So he will focus on the mining camp and grab a couple of units and go to the north to get some raiding. He should be able to get some units here. Second town center also going for fate steel and gunpowder. Now looks like he's gonna get one villager. Almost got that one, but he, he didn't manage to get any yet. Well, this is not an army can, that can really break your economy, especially if, if you don't have upgrades. Like, they're not going to be that strong. See, early palace guards actually doing a very good job, especially with the help of the town center. You should be able to defend this well. Now, fate steel gunpowder. FSG. Let's just call him FSG. He's still around your base, so... No... The funny thing is, no military upgrades yet. Bad timing to, to build a wall here. The good thing is they didn't block the... <laughs> ah, they did block them. Early Palace Guards actually doing a decent job on... For the Feudal Pressure. Uh, can, uh, this civilization can be actually a very good one for to extend your feudal battles. If you want, if you want to extend them for longer periods of time, just go mass early mana arms, raid your opponent, or a couple of chugenus to defend, and you should be good to go. And I guess that's what people are trying to do now. We see the first military upgrade going for sort of. It's gonna be plus one armor for melee. It's combo. Gonna go down. And we're talking about 20 palace guards. Army value pretty close to each other. Also, military numbers. It's much more for sort of, but keep in mind those are weaker units. Now the monks, the dervish. Gonna be able to capture in the sacred site. Top, middle, and look like look like he's doing. He's going with the relic here, so he can kill his army. The problem is, you're you're leaving <laughs> your army alone. Let's see, let's see the kills. Let's see the kills. Will he be able to do it? Did he press it? Looks like he's pressing it. The units are healing. <laughs> it went down. It, that didn't go as well as. As he expected. It looks like sort of maybe able to hold this app. No military upgrades yet for FSG. This guy had just had too much faith here. That's why you need a gunpowder. You have the monks, you give the fate, you got you have the golems, and you just need the gunpowder to, to deal with this. Talking about gunpowder, Ayubis have very interesting siege weapons that we haven't really seen yet in this match. Hopefully we will see them as the game continues. Now this, this monk left his relic inside enemy base. So that's one relic left in, in favor of your opponent. And you have two here. Uh, this one will be very hard to contest. Because you can, you need to go through here, and that's the town center. So he will get at least three relics if he decides to do so. He's already two relics. 
There's one more here. He should be able to get it quite soon. Secret site in the south being contested. Now more military units going for fate. Or faithful guy. Got a few production buildings here and there. Sort of sitting with three barracks. Already doing his farm transition on the back. Uh, very nice. Remember, yes, uh, with the Song Dynasty, you will have uh, extra discount for the farms. And you actually get discount for the houses, the mill, uh, any kind of economic building, except the military buildings. Those you don't get extra bonuses. But the towers are still considered as economic buildings. So anyway, it's a, it's a good thing. They cost 60 wood, so it should be a good time to put towers. They, they use cheaper. Like if you build 10, you use safe. 40 uh, 400 resources there 400 wood that could have been gone somewhere else sort of aging up with the mont lu academy imperial officials collect tax twice as often and also collect 20 percent of taxes as food and also contains unique upgrades i'm gonna show you soon when this is finished and now our faithful guy decides to strike again directly into his base. Like, why go here? You know, go to the main town center. That's all it matters. Gotta be careful not to lose the monk here. Not again. Now, crossbowman doing a really good job against those palace guards. Numbers not in favor of sort of not any veteran upgrades yet it's a really really good timing for our faithful guy not a good timing for sort of you see one of those upgrades is gonna be regional inspection supervision by imperial efficient improved by from 150 to 300 percent that's like that's like the boss you didn't want to have at work that's that's the kind of upgrade he's getting he's gonna these guys are gonna work three times faster Crossbow mount doing a really good job against pretty much any kind of unit. Palace guards already, already, yeah, they're already palace guards, so they're the, the stronger version. No plus one rage armor for sort of. Uh, that's very interesting. He didn't go for much military upgrades, but neither his opponent. He's just getting plus one range attacks, so they're pretty equal in that sense. See, villagers going down 9 in total so far. A lot of destruction. This destroy value here. First run being built. Raids coming from every side of the map. Second run being built here. We're not gonna see the big ram. Maybe we'll see it in the future. Who, who knows? Now these units are are becoming really annoying. It's, it's just a couple of crossbow man dealing with. It's already 27 villagers killed, leaving sort of with less villagers than his opponent. Now he's behind in the economy. Hopefully, imperial officials can make this up. His farm transition not ready yet, but his food income should be quite all right in the future. We see Magonel building here. Now he sees swap weapon. Switch to incendiary ammunition will dish damage in an increased area. So basically, this one. Uh, the, with the fire it will just be a big area and without the fire it will just be like a small area just like what you had before and looks like the Jangnan tower is gonna go down take a look at these upgrades here one of those we already see oh we didn't take a look at this one imperial officials calm down supervised skips now supposed to reduce damage taking by 35 percent an Imperial official limit increased by two. Grats an Imperial official upon completion. So it's basically it's a simple full of taxes, and now you see 
rams sorry not rams they swap the weapon to get the fire here have a greater range you see that the archer range also getting damaged here just by a little bit imperial official do what he does best collecting taxes while in the middle of destruction so far the numbers for sort of are not looking good here not many military units here Chuginus not with veterans in here we see sprinkles but only one of them you need much more than that sort of already with a good food economy but do not have much production yet most of his wood went into farms and now he has he's in a position where he don't have the army to defend I know Fate Steel and Gunpowder is gonna it's gonna retreat. Interesting decision. I mean he has the siege. He has the units. He has more units at least. He just needs to cause more damage and eventually these units will start decreasing. It looks like things start to cool cool off a bit a little bit. If our faithful guy decide to go go back to the drawing table and you know just let's create more siege meanwhile deer being gathered here a little bit of gold here still a lot of resources in the map to be contested remember the trade post in this map is in the middle so if you want to trade you, you you're gonna have a you're gonna have a tough time Oh, the camel lancers this is a unique unit for the camels these are the lancer version for the camels oh well they they went down pretty fast now magnon shot here managed to get a lot of units but didn't do much damage here springle managed to get a shot on that magonel loses a springle but the biggest threat is already gone now without that magonel it's gonna be easier for sort of to deal with this army Especially composed of only only mana arms. Well, he needs to gather the villagers into the town centers just so that they can they can deal with this crossbow mass. Without the villagers in the town center, it's impossible to deal with this crossbow mass. Like just a bunch of crossbows here and a mix of juvenus. Not looking good for sort of. To be honest now more units coming here and let's check the economic the ubits sitting on about almost three thousand resources whereas the shuzi's legacy sitting on about like 200 2800 something like that oh what happened to the food for the ubits Will he ASAP? Not yet, actually. And actually, now now you can go for to hire these these dudes here, ex exchange gold for this. That's nice. That's pretty cool. Crossbow dealing a lot of damage to the economy here. Not much defenses on this area. He's gonna lose a lot of villagers. Unfortunately, he's gonna lose all his economy here. This doesn't look too good for a sort of. And with this big guy here, the Tower of the Sultan, 800 health, attack 600 ram, plus 200 if it's a wall, 8 attack speed. If you compare it to his little brother, it only has 200 ram, plus 200 versus a wall, and this one has 800. So it's basically 3 rams instead of one just with maybe more health more economic upgrades going for the adubits and looks like with this push now you need more than three guys to build this otherwise it's gonna it's gonna take some time it, it costs almost it it's not almost, it's 1,000 resources. So it's a very expensive unit. It's 
sort of managed to get the gold in the back. So he's pretty safe with the gold for, at the moment. But now we're gonna see the Tower of the Sultan in action with his little brothers here. Look at this, this is a massive. This is just a massive tower. Let's see how much damage it does. 5.6k. See the attack. Come on, give him some space. And no space for the tower to attack. <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. There you go. Blam. 2.8k. Let's see another one. There you go. 600 damage each hit. And with that, this town center should go down. I don't think the Springles can do anything against this. This has too much health, too much too much defense. It's a very creepy unit. Ah, look at how much. You need at like 5 or 6 shots to take this out. Now more production buildings being destroyed for sort of. Imperial officially actually doing work here. If it wasn't for the Imperial official, oh my god. It looks so bad to, to see this strike. If it wasn't for the Imperial officials, actually sort of will have a much much worse economy. But Imperial official not in the right place. Not enough gold here. Sort of somehow still surviving but with much less economy than his opponent talking about about around 700 resources a minute and with that a landmark victory is approaching which is the last landmark it's this one the mount Lu academy does he know about it looks like he, ha he haven't scouted this one yet maybe it's a bug in the map or it's not i don't know could be. I don't think the crossbows managed to get here, but looks like he will find the landmark here. Now, no siege going for fate steel and gunpowder. And sort of decides that there is no way he can turn these things around. And GG gets called. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.